Right everyone, hello, my name is Anthony Cummins, as you all know, welcome to the Natori Ryu uh, get-together for 2015 and today we've got with us, we've got the old Dunk Meister there, Hi. we've got uh, Benjamin in the kitchen, turn around Benjamin, there you go, How's it going? <laughs> we've got John Hi. over there and we've got Peter, Master of Weapons, <laughs> <laughs> right, if you're new to what I do, basically I'm going to get, we're just going to video this. The reason is, is most of the people who follow us are in America and they just can't come. So we've got together we're in the Lake District in England and we're going to go through. And basically I won't show you much, but I'll just show you clips of footage as we go along. Now uh, the first thing we've done is we got here about three hours ago, two hours ago, and we've all had a chat. Like some people don't know each other, get to say hello. And then as always, it's got to the point where we just get our weapons out and show each other the size. So it's now size comparing time of our weapons. So, <laughs> at the minute, we're just going to go through the old swords. Um, we've got to say a massive thank you to uh, Andrew. Andrew really wants to be here and he's in Thailand. But he sent us over these pants and uh, he's done... And basically, he's put the Natoru logo on for us all. He's given us all a pair, which was superb. So, thank you very much. And I know JJ wants to be here and people like that. And we've got all you guys out there. So, I hope you enjoy this video and uh, keep up with us as we move through the events of the weekend. Fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> right, so uh, in Natoriu it says when you've got someone, you've defeated him. He's not going to be stood there like this, or, sorry, kneeling there. But the point is, is when you've defeated someone and they've probably give up fighting and he's a samurai, you've got um, a coup de grace to give. And you can either cut the throat and you just slice the throat and let him bleed out. You can insert the knife underneath the sternum here and just pierce the heart or obviously through the ribs. It just says around the sternum. And the other one, which I've not got yet, is it literally says the sole of the foot. But I was doing some research and I came across an old custom. <laughs> I came across an old custom and it's in a 1920s book where it says some samurai families have a tradition where they put a knife in a part around the ankle and it bleed and people bleed out from it. Now I have there's I've checked the arteries down there and there are some arteries down there, but I don't exactly know where it is. It's literally just lower foot. I at first thought it was under here and you just cut, you know, the, is it the femoral artery? Yeah. And that comes out, but it is literally sole of the foot. But this other thing says in the side of the foot, so we don't know where it is. We just know there are three coup de grace. So before you cut someone's head off, slit the throat, stab in the heart, or probably femoral artery or somewhere around here, an artery around here to bleed them out. And you cut their heads off. Right. Uh, it says in the scrolls, it says that when you sat down, um, in your own house this is, it's in your own house, uh, you put your spear on the right and the sword on the left and generally a little bit to the rear. Any ideas as to why? Would you put your sword on the, the left because you generally draw it with your right hand? Yeah. So it's just a sign of non-aggressiveness basically? No, it's the opposite, it's readiness. Oh, okay. So you can pick it up and you can draw in one. Yeah, swords on the left. You can remember this is your own house. So if somebody runs through your door, fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, ah! You pick up and you take it and draw. Whereas with the spear, it's straight away. It's up in your hand. Yeah. So if you change them over, you find you see it's a total problem. If you try to speak that out that way, you're going with the wrong hand forward. You know, obviously I, I, there is a debate on that because you can fight both ways. But the idea is then drawing your sword. You're automatically. This is the main issue. You're drawing left, uh, left-handed, so you'd have to take it round and do that. So therefore, Natori says, always have it that way round. And this is in your main sitting room, so you're having, you're chatting with your friends and everything. And if somebody attacks and runs in, cut them down. Right, guys, we are talking about defending the house so far. We talked about the scrolls and we talked about how you defend your house. And we're in a lodge and we decided that there's an enemy coming and that. Um, Duncan uh, is the target. They're trying to kidnap Duncan because of aristocratic blood or political ties or whatever they want. Or he's, you know, he's, you know, <laughs> he's got to be protected. So we've decided we don't have enough people to defend the entire room, the entire building. So we've decided what's the best choke point. Now his number one bodyguard is John, who's uh, his close retainer. Now John has gone for a short 
uh, sword because we're indoors. The katana you can only strike, you can only stab with, according to Natoru Ryu. So indoors it says change to a wakazashi. Then what we've done is we've got our secret weapon on the opposite side, who's going to sort of be hiding at first, but that's Peter, and he's got a long spear because he's got lots of room behind him. Um, we would have someone, a suicide guy in this room, to come out at the ta right time. So what I'm going to do is we're going to show, and Ben's going to take us through it. So, he's going to be the enemy. So we've left the gates, the doors open, we've actually secured the window in Peter's room, we've blocked it up with beds, we've also blocked the window up in the toilet with beds or tables. Basically, what we're trying to depict here is there's windows in every room, there's that needs a choke point. So if I'm coming here, you'd have an attacker here, this is going to happen straight away, I can't even get there. So look at the way he's holding it, that's... Yeah, it's what we've defended. We've blocked off the windows in here, the windows in here, windows in here. Yeah. But all these are open, so there's windows in there, a door, a door, window, window. Yeah, there's like six entrances here. There's so there? many ways in. So the person will come round. We'll see he's in there. So Peter, be back a bit. Don't let him see you first. And then straight away, I'm here. You come to see John's a threat. Yeah, and you, distraction. So yeah. as long as I'm focusing on my target, which yeah. is that way. You got the spear that side. This is the perfect, like a choke point, like you said. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah. then we'd have to. They've got to fight two ways, and actually explain the bit about them not being able to go backhand with a sword. We've decided it's right-handed, so it's mirror mirror for you and John. Yeah. So if I'm here and I'm fighting this side, okay, to actually get an effective cut on him, I need to be that way, and it's it feels alien to me to do that. So that's why I would have him in that room and not that room. Yeah. Right. So I'll be coming here, and it's it's uh, not an advantage because of this, you know, and it's a long weapon, yep. obviously. And you've now got your back to yeah, young people there, and I'm dead. So that's at least one dead. So and then hopefully, and then did you have a weapon? No. Look, lazy bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Sat there, you know, <laughs> fight them, boys. <laughs> so kill him. So he obviously would have his last ditch weapon. Um, Let's say we've got John with the short sword and John will be killing this way. But yeah, that is, and the idea is that, Natori says, is when you are, because of course samurai, they actually serve a lord, so when you're on the move, this is a lodge, we've come here for a break on our travels, uh, Duncan's the lord, this is what you have to prep and plan between your friends. Where is the exit point? North, east, south, west, where's your meeting points? Where are they actually, where are the mountains? We should have gone out actually and checked the mountains, we've got to do that. Uh, and where do you regroup? Where do you do all that? So that is ambushing in a house and how to defend against ambushing a house. Of course, there's no strict rule at the minute. It's just a case of whatever you feel is best is according to the actual layout of the building. Go. Sorry. Right, uh, who came up with that then? Peter, right. Peter, credit to him, has said, why not adapt it? We've got a bow here. Um, this is the bow, by the way, guys, that keeps flipping when I do it. So I'm going to try and shorten the string. Uh, where I made a video recently about this, and every time I shot the bow, it inverts. Uh, I stopped, I was on a train in Japan, in Tokyo, and I got Yoshi to pat a guy on the head, he had, uh, on the back. He had a bow with him and I asked him about the problem. So we had a three-way conversation in Japan on the uh, Tokyo, you know, ringway, and he had like a minute to go before he stopped. I'm like, come on, come on, try to explain <laughs> three ways. So Peter says, why not have uh, a bowman? So you'd have people coming in there, so the view from there would be... That would be the view, straight there, or over here, the view would be there. So Peter has said, why don't you have, because you've got a tall room in here, you've got a bow, you could have someone on the bed ready, with an, ar with, sorry, an archer ready on the bed, or around here. Um, actually, the bed would be up against the wall, and you're shooting and shooting, and then someone from that side defends as he comes out, as they come in, you keep them at bay till you lose your arrows, and then you ditch that and jump in there. Which I think is a good, good addition to the strategy. Right, we've just been discussing the reversal of that. So how would you, or how does Natori say you should get through that? Now Natori says you should either burn them out, uh, start burning the building down, uh, but then again, Duncan might be too important to kill. Uh, he also then says you should use boiling water, so you get if you've got enough time you set up vats of boiling water and you throw them at the actual people. Um, on top of that you've got gas attack, you can do a gas attack with a rifle, sorry a musket, or you can gas attack with a ball. 
um, and of course you can rip the wall down so you can saw through the wall and rip it down. Now that's led on to a discussion about um, gas attacks with muskets and I want to explain to you, you've got what's called the blister, now this is from the Bansen Chukai, the blister beetle, what you do is you crush it up and then you also crush up arsenic and things like that, I will try and get the thing in a bit. Now a blister beetle is in Asia and you pick it up and you get blisters and it's called, it's got a poison here called cantharidin. So it contains cantharidin, if I'm saying that right, and uh, risk to humans. Uh, as a blister agent, this chemical has the potential to cause adverse effects when used medically. For this reason, it has been included in a list of problem drugs. When ingested, i.e. they've breathed it in, um, or you know, it's gone through the mouth, uh, around 0 0.5 milligrams with a dose as little as, took to a dose of as little as 10 milligrams is potentially fatal. So if whatever you get, if you get 10 milligrams worth of it in your human body, you will die. If it's less than that, um, it causes severe damage to the lining of the, some uh, Latin part, uh, the urinary tract, uh, retinal damage. So basically, what happens is, uh, symptoms of this poison include blood in the urine, abdominal pain, and prolonged erections. <laughs> so, <laughs> never read that one before. So basically what it's saying is that when you shoot it in there, uh, you're gonna, your eyes are probably going to bleed, it's going to blister internally in here. If you do survive, you're going to be urinating blood and you're going to probably have stomach problems and vomiting. So as a samurai, you would shoot this in and then watch the people bleed and cough and crawl out. It's a little bit like a gas attack in World War One. So you're talking about that sort of... Um, horribleness if you want and that's just 10 milligrams of the stuff ingested by humans so how much you have you don't know you know what i mean that's how you build these things right at the minute guys what we're doing is uh, we know that these are from gabriel these are silent sandals and we know that they have them in the band century guy but nato ryu also has silent sandals but they're a different form and they're made out of a different material so um but we'll use the band century guy ones and we're discussing would a shinobi take off his straw sandals to put these on? Would you be able to put them on with straw sandals on? And then we're just uh, having a go at how quiet they actually are. Definitely still hear the creaking though, can't you? And there is a slight... But is that loud enough, do you think, to be heard? I don't know when people are in other rooms. I don't, th I don't think so. But I do still think you've got them cracks coming, haven't you? K yeah. Now try it without them on. With just your socks but I've on. got socks on. Yeah, so we're just... the same thing. Okay, take, take your socks off. Actually, you wouldn't slide it across the ground. You would... Yeah. <laughs> you can feel yeah, I think the difference is is just there. You can feel the stick, do you know what I mean? I would still say silent sandals all the way through, but you know my other question is, is are you wet? Yeah. Do you know if you come out from outside and it's raining, it's night of shinobi, it's rainy, it's windy. Are you going to be squeaking? Do you take your sandals off? Do you change over? What do you do? With we're, the not, we're not going to answer to this, we're just discussing that. Right, we're about to sit down to dinner. I am a very much an advocate of you should sit down and eat at a table. We have maybe gone a little bit overboard on the food. So we have literally just got so much food. But I am again, this is a, I, I learned this from another mate of mine, you always bring 110%. You bring what you're going to eat plus 10% and in the end it's not wasted because everybody then mixes it at the end, divides it and goes home and feeds the kids with it. And that, that's part of the, you know, share and move around and all that. Right chaps, it's 10 to 9 at night. Um, we are, we've just finished dinner and everything. Uh, ciders have come out, I think we're going to get beers out and things like that. And we are now about to study chapter 1 of the art of war. Uh, so we won't be too serious. It's late and everybody's tired. But uh, so far we've got the um, we've got the uh, card back up, the sort of altar card. We've got the uh, 
stuff going. We've actually reversed that one so people on the outside can sort of try and gather what we're doing. And then this is, we've just ate, and we're going to do through the Art of War. And Pete looks like he's got a million notes on it, which is mint. Right, so we're going chapter one, guys. Uh, Matt's Master Sun says, War is the vi sorry, war is a vital matter of state. It is the field on which life or death is determined and the road that leads to either survival or ruin and must be examined with the greatest of care. Therefore, to gauge the outcome of war, we must appraise the situation on the basis of the following five criteria and compare the two sides by assessing their relative strengths. The first five uh, the first of the five criteria is, and what we'll do is we'll go through those now, guys. Yeah. So what we're going to do is move on and discuss the five, we, we've called them the five constant factors. So we'll do that first. Right, chaps, uh, it's now 10 o'clock, so we've done an hour on the study of um, Sun Tzu. All we have actually done, but that's not a bad, that's not a good negative. All we've actually done is the five constant factors. And what we've done is we've got three different translations of it. We've got Sawyer, we've got the Folio Society one, and then I think we've probably got, I think that might be Giles actually. Um, and we've got them, we've gone through only the five constant factors and it's really quite difficult to, to break it down. Uh, but it's 10 o'clock and we've all had a long day. Um, Duncan's had the easiest day out of everyone. He did nothing. <laughs> he drove from like the south of England from about four o'clock this morning. Uh, so yeah, we're going to call it a night here. That's the end of night one. And we're going to just chill out now and enjoy and talk crap. So we'll see you all in the morning. Right, it's the morning, and uh, we've got the old Natori flag in the window, let people know what we're doing. Uh, we're just sorting out for breakfast now, and i um, going to crack on soon. There's the old Benjamin. <laughs> we're just about to uh, watch Johnny. He's just been to Thailand to, with Andrew to do some shuriken jutsu. Obviously in England, shuriken have been illegal for about 20 years, so we're trying to at least... In America, it's easier for you to have a go at this, and obviously Andy's been over. Uh, but to buy them it's illegal isn't it? You know you can't buy them, but now they've started to let let people buy them again. I remember in the 80s they used to throw shuriken at football matches and so they banned everything outright. So let's try not to hit the wall. John. <laughs> and Andrew Throburn, your student here is going to impress everybody with uh, his non-hitting the wall abilities. <laughs> right, that's it, there's the um, Meifu Shinkagi ones. This is the Chisholm Rio one. Right. Just in case somebody walks around that way. You said you prefer frying those I prefer ones. these ones, yeah. I find them easier. Next. Kind of scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Give it a welly, don't worry. <laughs> there you go. So, what, um, which shuriken have you got? In front of the right. Yeah, these are the Meifu Shinkagi Ryu Shuriken, and these are an approximation of the Chizen Ryu ones. Yep. Which, as you I find easier. They have one of those ones, actually. Yeah. These are impressive. They were got from. They've actually got a barcode on them, believe it or not. Where are they from? Thailand. Yeah. They've actually been hammered in at the end. Pretty wicked, them, you nails know. or security spikes or what, but they're, they're like a perfect size. That's, that's mint, that is top. <laughs> Feeding time at the zoo for everyone. Yeah. We're on about 10 to 10 in the morning. We've done the shuriken jutsu. We've, um, we'll probably do a bit more of that later when it's dark. Um, and then we're just feeding the troops and we'll all get changed and crack on. Right, okay. So, uh, from the original scrolls, these are usually called waraji. But in the scrolls in Natori, they call Waranji, and it's got the phonetic markers around it. So Peter's just throwing them on here. Now you're meant to carry a spare pair of these, aren't you, around yeah. your sword? Back, yeah. yeah, I've never. Where, where are you saying, Peter? You probably shred it through the back here. Yep. Or on the other side. It, I think it's just personal preference how you actually do carry it. It's just as long as it's a spare. Yeah. 
Right, we've basically, we're getting our togs on. I think when you come away, you should at least get your uh, kimono stuff on, your hakama, get in traditional way, get a taske on, and get the swords in, just to get the feel of it. Um, obviously, we, this is the first time we've had most people together. We've got five of us here, and everybody's in gear, which is superb. Everybody's brought something, and everybody's together, so we've just took some photos. And what we're going to do now is uh, have a go at moving with this stuff on, passing with each other, move with each other, because... I think what a lot of people don't realise is you should get used to moving and it's much more difficult to move with two swords than it is with one and we're going to go for some sword draws like we did in one of my videos Oosh! Fade to black <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're just, we, it's the first time we've actually got a squad of five people together so if for this exercise I act as captain because I've got to talk to the camera um, the rest of us would not be in Hakama. This is another conversation that everybody should have. What do shinobi wear on their legs? It's one of those questions that, you know, nobody's quite answered yet. Uh, the obvious one, or the one that most people go for, is that. The, uh, the clothes at the bottom bits. I think there's other versions. I've seen shinobi just bare-legged. I've seen pictures. And I have seen pictures like that. that in fact, there's only two pictures I know of in existence of a shinobi drawn in a shinobi manual and one of them had just a kimono on with no legs he obviously just took it up and the other one had the hakama um, clasp at the bottom so you could go for both of those however you'll see everybody has got a baiboku which is a mouth gag and what would happen is when you go out on a squad there's our peter you go out thinking these this means that people cannot talk and it's not a punishment they do it of their own free will it's the point is that it stops people from getting bored and chatting this reminds people because you could technically still talk to it Corn you know what I mean you could get him across but if you're doing that you know you shouldn't be talking so and then as the captain or the leader or even if they're higher ranking than me a shinobi would come and lead in the darkness so even if you're higher ranking samurai I would lead you as a lower ranking shinobi uh, or shinobi samurai and take you where you need to go and the reason I don't have a gagging is because you need passwords so I would give a password to the other people and then you'd follow with me so there we are we're getting up and that's what a squad would look like and they'd have probably we could debate whether or what they had on their legs Close, that in it. Let's do it again. What, because I won? <laughs> <laughs> you're fast, mate. You're very fast. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> These are live swords, by the way. <laughs> right. One more, come on Benjamin. Wait, what are you saying? I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> Get ready, you're gonna kill me. I think I've got a very, very short fraction, but literally yeah, me. not much. Anybody else want to go? Oh, is that a bit dangerous? Yeah, yeah. I'll be a go. Yeah. 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 No, no. <laughs> no, no. Sword in, though. What do you mean? You're taking that. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm going to try it with Kodachi. Oh, okay. Black as ashy. Why has he, he got that? Because, no offence, but... <laughs> I don't feel that comfortable with it using oh. the Shinken. Okay. Oh, right, is that blunt, that one? Yeah. Okay, use a blunt one. Use his sword because it's blunt. Yeah. Isn't yours blunt? Yeah. Right, there's two katanas here that are blunt. Don't be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, that's blunt, they're both. Yeah, blunt. Well, we smash swords as well. Yeah, yeah that's that one. 
Kaidos. Yeah. Don't feel comfy with a safe thought! Watch me laugh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm trying to get off site and him. Yeah. Just don't kill him. You're quite fast, Ben, though. Pete, you're fast, but I mean, you're doing it the long sword. He's doing it the short. That's still good. Nice, Jen. One more. Are you all right over there? Yeah. <laughs> sure you I'm <laughs> <laughs> Leave it longer. Let them pause because we've got this rhythm of when you're dropping it. Yeah. Chop my muscle in as well. Yeah, 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 go for it. Right, so what we've got is when you're travelling in Natoriyu, if you're a single traveller and you're going through a dark, dangerous area, you get your friend who is another samurai. It can be a servant, but it says be careful, servants, if it ends in a sword fight, possibly run away. So if you're travelling alone, you have him behind you and he will walk. Directly behind. Now Mubi Yoshiryu says you come, should come slightly to the left and I agree with that because then what happens is the light goes all the way down there. Now, uh, just come this way guys for us so we can get a bit of space in. Now if he is the, um, he's just Natori, he's walking along, this is where his servant should be, here. However, if trouble ensues, then what you need to do is move behind your torchman. So you drop behind him and then torchman goes forward. So you've seen someone on the road, I'd look like, actually go back to your original positions. So, you'll be behind. If they've seen me on the road, they've seen a human figure, you'll give the nod and you switch round. And this is, and then what he does is he puts the torch towards my face. Now if I'm going to actually carry on walking, you keep the torch at my face and you go that way round. So it's almost like you keep exactly where I am. So back off a bit for us guys, we'll have, we've got not got much space. So as you come forward, you go behind him and I'll go that way around. And we're meant to pass each other like that, so that nobody kills. You're constantly in the dark, and then you guys carry on like that. And that is for everyone you pass, because a lot of times like, ah, you're alright, bam, they'll kill you. So everyone, just do it. If it comes to an actual sword fight, um, so you've seen me, you swap round, if it comes to a sword fight and I'm going to go for it, what happens is you, I can't physically see you, you're behind me now, and you're out, you keep outside of the torchlight. Now you will take a Kamai, I don't know. So the idea is you take a stance. So normally, if I could so move out of the way, but if I can see you, we can see each other's stances, uh, the swords are actually drawn, we would know what stances, what Kamais we're in. But what you do is you torch bearer, so uh, draw your sword for us, your sword bearer goes in the way. You put the sword towards, your fa towards my face, and this means you can adapt to your command. Now, we don't really have enough space here, guys, but what I'll do is I'll try and, you know, what happens is I'll try and fight this out of the way. As I'm trying to kill him, in the darkness, you go around. 
and then so I'll just move around for us, John. As I'm trying to fight you, you're you're a samurai, so you're pretty much beating me off with it. You know, you will come and kill directly that way. So let's go through that. Right. So swap that way. So just back off a bit, guys. Because I know it's, we just really, we need a big <laughs> dozo, don't we? Right. So you've noticed I've come. You've swapped it round. We draw swords because there's going to be trouble. And then what happens is I can't see you. I go. I'm trying to fight this gentleman, and I'm like trying to. But then you move round in the dark. And I'm conscious, and I have not seen you move that. As far as I'm aware, I think you're still there, and I'm still trying to kill you. And that's where right. you'll land the, limb, the blow. It can be done in any way you want. There's different ways to do it. The idea is that simply, you stay in the dark, and you kill. Perfect. Right, you just kill. A diversion. That's a diversion. Yep. The other one is uh, if you are. So, if you, you come up to me, yeah, and I've got a torch, and we're like, hold on. And he says, I want that torch. Give me your stuff, yeah? The idea of what you do is you say, no, 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 you can't have it. Uh, or you can, and then it ends up in a fight. But what you can say instead is you say, okay, there you go. And then you back off into the darkness. And when you go into the darkness, you draw, and then uh, as you turn around, I come out of it and I kill him. So you straighten up. So he thinks, oh, all right, then cheers. Now, the, why do they ask for lights? Why is it so important? Possibly the light you have uh, is probably got a lantern. It's probably got the Lord's Crest on it. So you've got to be careful that you can't give away the Lord's Crest uh, because then they use it to deceive people. And the other thing is just generally to people taking stuff off you. It seems to be a real issue in the Edo period, and I think it's to do with the crest. But the other one is, uh, can I just use, in fact, no. Let me use your tanto. Now the other one is, uh, so I've got the light, he's asked for it, I say, nah, we argue a bit, I go, alright, then there you go. And then you, when you turn around to go, I'll draw, I'll cut his throat, and you just cut from the back, like that. So you literally let him go. Yeah? Have we got a, is this sharp? Yeah, sharp. It's just a back <laughs> part. Right, we've got a... <laughs> of course it's sharp. God, you can't kill anyone nowadays. <laughs> Use one of the wood ones. Yeah. <laughs> right, so, so same with gold and same with money, same with anything. Give me that, give me that. There you go, mate. Yeah, boom, just cut his throat, boom, stab him, whatever you want. The idea, Nat already says, is stay out of the light at all times. So if you two are attacking me and he's got a light, Nat already would say, so uh, can you just go, sort of, you're there, you're both ganging up on me, yeah? What would happen is. At all times, I've got to keep out of into out of the darkness and move, and then you've got to search for me. And the idea is, you stay away. It says at all times, keep out of the light, or you cut down the light bearer first. In fact, let me get a non-sharp sword for this. So you've drawn your sword. Uh, just actually, John, you better back away a bit. Can so you roll that? Clearly, going to whack me. With I'm going to whack it. Yeah. So watch your fingers. Right. So you've got the torch. It says you you get rid. Keep it up. Oh, give me a bit of. You'll be fighting you. You get rid of this. And then what happens is you do that and then eventually he gets to block it. So you'll get used to blocking it. And what happens is you cut that way. We need a bit. Just shift over there. So you 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 will cut. Bang! Get him used to it. Actually, cut back. Yeah, I'm break it. It's alright. And then you cut on that side. Keep him going. Do you understand what I'm saying? One, bang, he gets used to this cut. This cut. Cut down. Move to the side. Right, I've killed people, I've killed John, he's gone down, I've retreated up a hill, torchbearers have come, I've killed them, the torches are all gone out, there's no moon out, I've attacked because I understand ninjutsu, I understand shinobu jitsu, there's no moon, I've made sure of that, 
I've come to kill him and now I'm in the middle of the woods, I've got trees around me and we have to play the game of listening, so it's called listening to utterances. So what, I, what happens is a Natorio student will creep, ca um, crouch down and what he's listening for in the night is the enemy trying to creep up on him silently. Now do it again for us Peter, perfect, but do it again. So you can hear that sound, one more time just so we can hear the sound. I'm listening for that, or I'm listening for orders between the men. Silent orders, they're trained samurai. So what happens is you do something called the hem cut. Now I'm coming for us Peter. The hem of a kimono ends here, around just below shin level. So Natori Ryu students, what they do is they'll practice cut from here, and they cut the legs off in the dark. But you've got to do it, and Natori says, he actually says that when you're in the dark, change it around, your eyes become your ears, if you will, and your ears become your eyes. The point is, is that your ears are not as good as your eyes at observation. So when it's pitch black, close them, forget it. Yeah? Unless you can physically see them, use your ears. Concentrate on your ears. So we concentrate on the ears. Got it? When I can hear him there, I cut both legs off. Boom. Or, as if he's a bit far away from me, I too have got to be silent. Well, that's why it becomes a game of it. Who can hear who first? And remember, they're probably in a squad of men, they are looking for me. I am still waiting for them to come. So one more time, Peter. and you would cut to his legs. Now, uh, we were just discussing, if they were creeping up, say I'm blocked in, and he's creeping up, it doesn't say this in manuals, but you'll cut, but we'd suggest blocking. Even though his legs are gonna come off, oh sorry Peter, then uh, his sword's gonna fall on you, so be careful. Um, so, my advice to you guys out there watching this video, start to practice creeping in the night and moving as quietly as you can. And then get used to listening and sitting in this position, and then when they come, make that cut and kill them. Of course, don't forget to block yourself on the way out, or don't die. This is the <laughs> core amazingness of this weekend. Tea and cabbage cream eggs. I am upset that they're stealing the cabbage cream eggs, which is really okay, but I will hold it against them for years. <laughs> <laughs> right, we've done, we've just finished doing some sword draws. You've probably seen some of the stuff we've done um, uh, with attacking each other and torches. We've gone through some stuff. I've not filmed and put some stuff out because I want to make proper videos of it, uh, but obviously these guys have seen it. Um, now we're going to go for a walk because it's sunny and shining and we should get out and get some fresh air, otherwise we'll die of stuffiness in here. Um, then we'll just have a chat on the way and we'll probably talk warfare as we go. Right, we're just outside, we're having a, a wander. Uh, I won't go into it because you, you can see this on last year's video, we did the same. Um, you know, what, what's the position you go over the mountains, the way you would actually get across a lake and things like that. But this year we've talked about laying markers and in the Natori scroll it talks about how to lay markers, which are fire markers, which are basically the fuses from your... Um, uh, muskets you'll hang on trees when you need to make a decision when you're trying to get back in the dark and it's pitch black um, the, the the fuses you hang on the trees are a little light and you can see them so if you come into a fork in the road you put one on the left and you go left or if you come to an issue where you're not sure where you go you mark them so at night the, your squad is going backwards through where it's infiltrated done its job then it's fleeing the area and you follow those light markers back and there's another skill you do with paper to try and reflect moonlight and all that. So that's what we're doing at the minute. Right, we just got back from a walk, cup of tea. We're actually sending cards out to people. So we've got Krista here, we've got John Johnson, and we've got Andrew Throwburn. 
um, send some out. I always think we should definitely interact between schools and we should definitely interact between people. And uh, I think it was Chikamatsu who says you've got to keep sending cards to each other and get to know each other and meet each other. Make sure you know each other and keep a communication going. So I think he's correct. So let's have a cup of tea. However, unfortunately, Duncan's got to go home for various reasons. So which means Ben, is Duncan is Ben's ride. So the Benjamin has to go home. Look at that face. Not happy. He's, he's ecstatic. He's dead happy of going back to his wife. Which was mine. <laughs> well. Yeah, don't. Right, guys, it is now uh, five o'clock on the Saturday. Uh, ben and Dunker have gone home now. Uh, we're having tea and biscuits. But what we've done is in the scrolls it says, Natori says that you've got to build your house not to look beautiful but for defence. Is he merchants and farmers build nice things? As a samurai, you should build a military thing. And he said you should build it with the same sense of you build castles. So what we've done is we've just listed all the things that we find in castles, from um, killing zones to graduating height to moats to walls. And what we've done is built here, we've designed a house, if you will, that we would do. If you look, we've put the major walls with spikes on the outside. We've put lightweight watchtowers in the corners. We've put guard houses alongside the um, gate. The gate has got a tree path going in so that the enemy are funneled in. Outside we've got a moat. This necessarily doesn't necessarily have to be water. We literally could have a deep V with spikes in it, not a problem. Now this is actually a pond and the reason we've made it this shape is that when the enemy are funneled in, we funnel them this way. And what happens is the guards have got arrow slits going inwards and going outwards. This means that the enemy can be shot there which we decided we're going to put strong rooms on the corner with um, shooting ports from it so that we can shoot this way and they, they can shoot that way and they get caught in a crossfire. Also here we've got a meandering stream. We decided it would be thin but very deep so that actually people had to jump across it uh, which allows for these to better, you know, they're impeded their movement. The re What we've got here is we've got some bushes and that's actually we decided going to be like one of those fences that vines and fruit grow up and what we've got here is a secret exit Natori says you should use Shinobi Gucci which means a, a secret hidden exit from the house to the outside probably a tunnel or a doorway or a hidden doorway and then what we've got is these so people can't get in then again we've got a, an opening to a tunnel to an exit from a tunnel there so that's our escape route if it gets too much on, we've done the same on the other side with just the, the um, river and the well here we've got landscape rocks, Zen garden rocks, but we've made them big and we've made them probably bigger towards the wall coming down here. That means you can defend the from this last point and we've put one last secret exit through the wall here, hidden. So that would be a way out and that would be a last stand chance in case you had to flee. And that's what we've come up with. So anybody out there watching this, design your own house, use the castle principles, go and study castle warfare and uh, come up with this and the idea was of course Natori was a paid samurai they got to rebuild their houses quite often uh, they'd get knocked down quite often or they'd move and he says when you rebuild you go, this is what you think about right guys and then what we're going to do, move on to something else now right guys it's actually just a point I don't know if you can see that I know it's snowing again it's starting to get dark uh, we are now going through, this is the first half of the Natura book and some of the basic opening chapters we're going to discuss and we're discussing limitations and uh, how to inspire people it not only talks about how to inspire people in the arts of war and things like that but I just wanted to grab the camera because it is snowing but you can't really see through the window and the mountains are covered in mist now so, right it's just turned, um, just turned 7 o'clock and it's dark outside now Peter shocked us and surprised us with all this He's actually made these, they're broomsticks, with a really hefty and very heavy, uh, what's the cloth made of Peter? It's uh, hemp cloth. So we've got hemp cloth with pine resin and beeswax with a little bit of explosives inside. Uh, obviously not compressed, it's about, that's what it says in the manuals, you should put like gunpowder esque things in it to keep them burning well. So this is basically a windproof torch. And um, what we're doing is we're now trying to experiment, um, John's brought a, um, night vision camera it's an old one but it should be night vision wise and what's going to happen is going to try and record it on that we're going to go into the woods nearby and burn one of these and see how well it does we're going to see if we can we did the stuff before with the sword we're going to see if we can walk in and out a torch light what it looks like within a certain area we're going to try that so right now if you're about to see night vision burning it all worked and john emailed me and it all worked fine if you don't see it now 
and there's a little message that apologises, it didn't work. <laughs> Right, we're not allowed, it's the English countryside, so we're not allowed to take any weapons out with us, we'd get arrested. So, um, is this your reversible one, Peter? Yeah. So, Peter's handmade and hand-stitched a reversible Natori top. So he's made it into, he's got his black um, tied uh, Hakama, and he's got a reversed top. We're going to put him out in the middle of nowhere in darkness and see if we can see him. And I'm going to probably hold the torch and John's going to film us. And we'll see where we get to. Hi guys, so basically uh, I've got the torch on the end of the, somewhere, oh, there we go, torch on the end of, that's the waterproof torch, that's Peter there, starting to rain and hail guys, <laughs> right let's get this done, so, Bright though, actually. <laughs> I think we've got it properly lit now. What we do is, we were talking before, the idea is you come up, somebody asks for a light, somebody asks for a torch, you give it to them. So you're, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm saying, give me the torch, give me the torch, I take it off you, and then you want to move into the darkness. Right. And now you see the lights in my eyes. This is the idea, is that it's, where do you hold the torch to see best? And actually I can't see Peter. I can't actually see your hands, Peter. Yeah, if it weren't for your hands, I can't see you. I definitely still can't see. Oh, hey, I'll tell you what, I can see your eyes, Peter. So you must you have to ink your face. Actually, technically, Peter, I am actually looking for I'm looking straight at it. So come off the side of the path. So the idea is you give me the light and I'd turn around and he'd cut my throat. We did that one before. But what we're experiment with now is actually seeing a shinobi with a torch. Definitely your hands, yeah, hide your hands, Peter. In fact, go for the Bansen Chukai and do the crouch. There we go. Can you, you see him in night camp? Bottom of the tree, yeah. Yeah, I, I physically can't see it. I can see your boxing, but that's about it. Now I can. I can see you now. But... Excellent, excellent. So, how many metres would you say it is, guys, visual? It's within two metres? About three. About three? Hide your face again, hide your hand. Yeah, there I can start to see an outline, but... There, let's just say, Paul, uh, John, how far away would you say that is? Five metres. Five metres. So, I realistically cannot see him at all now. Even though I know he's there, and I'm looking for him, I can't... Move your bucket, mate. The bokken stands out, so the other one is the Wakazaki bokken. Yeah, now I can't see it at all. At all. No, no, yeah. Now I can see you. Two about two and a half metres, three metres. Four, be safe. Excellent. I'll show you Pete, do you want to have a hold of that? Put it down for me. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Right. Go, uh, go over there. Have a look. At what point can you not see me, Pete? Hands. Hand. Look, can't. There's actually something else. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 
John, do you hold fire before it goes out? No, I don't. fire like a man. <laughs> like a man would. We'd like to have a go. Yeah. Oh, that's the right. Still recording. Cool. All right. Yeah, the switch to turn it off is just there if you want to see the difference. Which one? Yeah. Just slide that backwards and forwards. See if I put a point in the end of this. Oh, yeah. Say again, mate. See if I put a point in the end of this. See if it was slightly harder ground, I'd still be able to stick it into it. Yeah. Well, don't go under it. <laughs> H core. Yeah, will you kneel down from there, hide your stuff so we can get an idea? Gotcha. Right, try and find him a... Uh There, yeah, you're about two and a half, three meters away. I think it seems like it's basically a three meter, yeah. a three meter distance, isn't it? So if you're crouching, you're looking for a human shape, aren't you? Yeah, and you are physically looking for him. You know where he is. We've got to remember that. But even so, you could accidentally stand across someone. So we'll let, we'll let drive into the ground. That is only soft enough whether to drive in. Yep. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you can smell the sort of... Impressions, guys, of that, what do you think? Yeah. If Sengoku cool. period, what would you be? How would you feel? It scared the hell out of me. Yeah. yeah. Think yeah about you can see two metres around you, that's it. <laughs> Only where you're pointing it, though. Mm. And if you look at it, you're dazzled for the next ten minutes. So. You lose your night vision completely though, while you're holding it, just like that. Yeah. After I was actually walking with it, and just handed it off, you do lose your night vision, but... Yeah, it's easy to hold like that, and then you're not got it in your own eyes. When you move away from it and actually close your eyes, your night vision does come back slightly quicker, and he's still holding it. Yeah. So you'll be able to get up to him, whether it be it. Katana or Wakazashi and just cut him down. Yeah. Even from the back. So let's consider the camera as the enemy. Yep. Uh, I am your servant. Now I am carrying your light behind you. I'm carrying it there. We've come across the enemy. We swap positions. So you drop back. I drop forward and I raise the light and I put it above the enemy. Now you've got to move into the darkness. So what I want you to, you stay behind me though. I mean for the minute, Pete, stay behind me. Can you switch it from infrared to normal sorry from that so let's do it again so what i want to do is i want you to tell me when he disappears from camera shot or from your eye shot to go for the front right we've noticed the enemy is there we swap we have our own code system you swap you go back i put my torch up towards the enemy's face gone gone so right we're looking at about a meter now I can see him. <laughs> take a minute i can see his face now Right, where's he gone? And oh, by the way, Peter, you're meant to stand in my shadow. You're meant to uh, manipulate my shadow. Yeah. Yeah. And then we have to move around. So he's coming to, as you come to move and fight us, you will move and then you disappear into the darkness as you deal with me. Yeah. So you're dealing with me here and then he's going to come around you and you're wondering where's he gone and you're trying to clock it. So can you return to your original position, John? Um, you come, Peter, we'll do it in. Let's do it in night vision. Okay. So, right. we're walking towards him. I'm travelling. We're light. We spot him. Tag out. Move back. I move forward. I will then deal with John. I'll draw my sword and deal with John. And I'll try and force him. And you're in the darkness now. And I'll force him round. And you'll end up behind him. And this way, watch your see me? That way, now, if you take a turn, I'm up, you've got him to deal with. And that's how it should be done. Of course, you've got all this to bother with. 
<laughs> but you know, that, that's the general premise. Someone behind, tag out, move around, confuse, hide in the shadow, kill from behind. Right. You walk forward. Spot him, tag out, move back. I'll deal with him, I'll draw. We'll end up fighting. You move around somewhere you can. And we, you know, you'll be clashing with this. Eventually, you behind him. Turn round, there he is. Boom. Nice. Right, it is now um, a rainy, a very rainy Sunday morning. Uh, mountains have got more snow on them. Um, we After we got in last night, we had a right good chat. We sat around chatting for ages about warfare and we talked about... What did we talk about, chaps? We talked about um, side helpers in battles. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I think we'll just we'll run through that in a minute, actually, the, the achievements of warfare. And we've talked about when you cut off someone's head, if the chin is still in position, you have to saw through there, pull the chin off and reattach it to the head. We talked about how to um, close a dead person's eyes when you've cut the head off and what the uh, side attachments were for, weren't they, on swords. Mental discipline. Yes. Oh, yes. We did mental discipline and uh, how lust, how lusty are we, what are we not prepared for physically, what are we not prepared for mentally, are we overweight, are we underweight, are we flexible enough, are we strong enough, is the rain coming down any heavier, it just seems to have, we've, this morning we've talked about a bit of Japanese history with uh, Nobunaga feeding people um, drinks from dead head, dead skulls, um, and we talked about some German longsword, We've actually talked about the juxtaposition between brutality and honour, where, where obviously samurai do have lots of honour, but it's a little bit different, and how brutal they can be, and how sometimes they don't care that they've made promises, and other people will care. And now I think we're going to do, we're going to do the seven considerations from Sun Tzu, aren't we? And do a little bit more of the Natori stuff. But these chaps have to go in a three or four hours, so we'll crack on with it and uh, see how far we get. Right, it's now um, 20 past 11, we're discussing the, um, the seven considerations. Now we've gone which ruler has the way, basically which ruler has you know, the moral way, um, which commander has the greater ability, and for this we decided to go between um, Steven Seagal or Gary Oldman, right? So we discussed that, both of them have reputation as actors, but actually... Uh, Gary Oldman can act and Steven Seagal cannot act. So we're talking about the difference between reputation and ability. What was the what was the translation for yours of that one, the second one? Uh, the, up here, aren't they? Uh, which of the two generals has the most ability? Yeah. Which so basically which has the most ability? And we draw mine says which commander has the greater ability? I'm the same. We decided to. The point I'm making is that. We decided reputation versus ability is a massive point. Um, we decided which side has the advantage of climate and terrain. We looked about our own climate and terrain here. And if somebody was on the mountain up there, they'd have a better advantage over um, terrain. But they'd have a worse advantage over climate. If I can show you. It's hard, but basically up there, there was a mountain. Now it's just covered in snow and ice and sleet. And the sleet coming down quite hefty now. So obviously we'd have the advantage of terrain, uh, climate, but they'd have advantage of terrain. Um, which army follows regulations and obeys orders more strictly? Now we decided this was Donington Heavy Metal Festival, was it this one? Yeah. Right. Um, hold on. Yeah, we said if you go to a Boy Scout camp, they are well trained. They've got little areas, cutting areas, flags, washing up areas, toilet areas. But if you go to a heavy metal concert, they're all pissed. They're all crapping everywhere. There's people sleeping everywhere. And that's the difference between two great commanders. There is no decisive leader at a heavy metal concert, but there is absolutely a commander in charge at a Boy Scout jamboree. Hence, we came up with Boy Scouts Mountain Dogs and murdering Donington Festival. It got into a weird conversation there. Peter's fault. So, um, which army has superior strength? We talked about that, obviously. We broke that down into which army has numerical strength versus equipment strength. So you can have numerical strength, but not have the better equipment. And sometimes better equipment can outdo numerical strength. Um, whose officers and men are better trained? Uh, this is quite obvious, you know, you just got to have a decent amount of training. 
Um, which side is more strict and impartial in meeting out rewards and punishment? Uh, that is, again, uh, in Natoriu it says, and we discussed this last night, it says, when you give out a punishment, give out a punishment very slowly. Make sure you check the facts, make sure you check everything is all right. But when you give out rewards, give out rewards fast. The reason is that if you give a reward to the wrong man, really the man is quite happy with it and most of the people are like oh he's quite generous even to the wrong guy if you punish the wrong man and kill them you, you've annoyed a lot of people when you they find it's the wrong man and people don't want to fight for you so you've got to make sure that's correct just to go back to the first one which ruler has the moral way which ruler has a way we discussed um uh, north korea was it we we're saying that north korea have fear but they don't have the moral way. They clearly are not moral leaders. So we discussed in humans how far do people go under fear and how far do people go under moral leadership. And we got to the idea, bringing it back to Nato Ryu, is that um, when you've got uh, going to war, you have to get your servants and you say to your servants, if you achieve a good feat of arms, we'll promote you to samurai. If you run away from us, we will track you down. We will murder you. We will murder your wife. We'll murder your father. We'll murder your mother. And then we'll murder your children. And this is the signed pact they have to all put together. Or the, sorry, more of an oath that they say. And then we just read to the end of chapter one. So if you're wondering how to do this, guys, with Sun Tzu's Art of War, which this year is mainly, you know, Chinese classic till the book comes out, then remember, this is how you go through it. It took us how long, guys? Um, just doing this, yeah. Just this today now. Uh, three quarters of an hour. So three quarters of an hour ish towards an hour. We're climbing up to an hour, three quarters of an hour. We've got on a page and a half, right? Through discussing it, through breaking it down. So that's how you should be doing it with friends. Do it through Skype, do it through whatever Facebook you need. Right, we'll crack on with a cup of tea. If you're in a house on your own at night, or you haven't got a servant there, uh, what you have to do is imagine that's a sliding door section. When you come up to a sliding door, you've got to crouch down and you've got to open it with your left hand. This is because if there's somebody behind it, somebody's there, you can come back and you can draw quickly. However, if you op open it with your right hand, you can't, you know what I mean, you can't grab it. So you open with the left hand and you keep on your katana and you wait, and then if you have to draw and kill on the other side. What it says you don't do is you don't open to the uh, left, uh, sorry, open to the right. What you don't do is come here and open the door this way. Because if you open the door this way and somebody's there, there's no space you hit the door. So what I want you to imagine now is, let's imagine there, this is the place. If I open this way, and then I see somebody is there, hidden, I go to grab it, and there's a door in the way. However, if I come this way, and I open that way, and my drawing area is here. I've got all this area to draw the sword in. Yep, so make sure, get to the left, open with the left, and check. So, from this side what happens is you come up to the door, you will wait, you'll pull the door, you'll look, and it says you step back, look round, and if everything's okay, you can go through. If it's not okay, you'll open, if it's not okay, you can draw and you can attack and go through. Remember, you do not pull it with your right hand because the door is here then. And then when you look, you can't draw against the door. You've got a wall probably here or you've got to get the doors in the way. So have a practice that all and see how far you get. But chaps, it is now quarter past one, exactly when we said we were going to get going. Um, these chaps are going now, they're about to leave. We've had Jonathan over there, or John Paul, and we've had Peter here, and we've just, you know, we're just saying our goodbyes, and we've, now what we always do is re-divide the food again. We have always bring too much, but now we take it home and feed it to your families, things like that. It's about, you know, sharing and all that malarkey. And I'm going to stay on for a bit and clean up and make sure it's ready to give back in the morning. All right then, right? Say goodbye, everyone. All right. Bye. All right. See you soon. Right guys, okay, um, they went about 20 minutes ago, maybe 30 minutes ago, I've put the place back into basic order, I've basically got the room back as it was we originally got here, I am now going to um, pack my stuff and pack the food I am going to take home, but uh, just a few words from me at the end which I always, almost always do. Uh, it was a really successful weekend, there were some issues with it, but not bad issues. Uh, everybody was very, very nice, everybody was very, very interested, 
uh, or at least shown that, you know, perceived to be interested, but I think people were definitely interested. I think it was great for Peter. Peter definitely came out of his shell. He's quite, not quite on the internet, but you see him as quite a quiet lad, and he loved it. He was really getting into it. It was excellent. John's a very quiet man, naturally, and uh, but I, I think he seemed to be quite interested in it. He's very nice. Ben, of course, Mr. Jiu-Jitsu, he's uh, definitely interested, but there was problems with Duncan at Duncan's end, so Duncan had to leave, which, of course, Ben then had to leave, so they only got half of the weekend, so it changed the dynamic. Whereas Ben's a very, very talkative person and very um, alpha guy, so he, he brings about conversation, which of course when he goes changes the dynamics and when Duncan went everything changed again. But we everybody adapts to it and we then made it a bit more of a study group, a bit more of a on the table studying things. And in addition, of course, as you've seen, we went out into the night and um, actually did some torches. So what I want to say is to all those people who don't come on these things or can't because they're in America or just simply can't get here, it doesn't matter how big or small Natori is, it doesn't matter if there's five of us in the world, if there's 50 of us in the world, if there's 5,000 in the world, it doesn't matter. What matters is how deep you go into it with your friends about you. And as you see, we built relationships there and bonds in the sense that we went out into the woods at night and um, set torches on, had people hide in, and it's all good fun. And what we have to remember is that that's what you guys have got to be doing. Even if you're on your own. If you're on your own, don't worry about it. Build a torch, go into a place where it's private, set the torch on fire, put the, stand the torch up. How far can you get close to it? What can you see? What can you not see? How close can you get to a rock before you see it? You can do all these things. You can definitely study Sun Tzu and the Art of War, the six, uh, seven Chinese classics. You can study all of these. Not a problem in the slightest. They're all there ready for you to study. So I am now going to relax. I might do a little bit of study myself, a bit of home study, uh, a bit of out of war, um, and then probably go to sleep and uh, wake up tomorrow and return home. Uh, so uh, please enjoy. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Join us on the Facebook page and subscribe here for more warfare and more information on that type of thing. See you later, guys.